Congratulations on the victory, Dan. Uh, quite a big win for your Bellator debut, huh? Yeah, yeah, huge win. Um, you know, a super tough guy, and to get a chance to fight a number three ranked guy right out of the gate, what a huge opportunity, and, uh, you know, thankfully he capitalized on it and made the most of it. And we just found out about this fight last week. How long, how long notice did you have for it? Uh, I think it was 10 days, 11 days, so... Yeah. And it, it had been a while since you were in there as well. Uh, you'd only competed once since you were in the UFC. So uh, did it just feel good to get in there and, and get some time? It was so, so good. You know, uh, especially at this stage of my career, I'm 34 years old. Like, I didn't have a year to wait around. You know, everybody went through the same situation, MMA and otherwise, you know what I mean? Had to kind of take a year off and, and not get to work. Um, and I'm just thankful to get back to work, you know what I mean? To have the opportunity to get out here and, and do what I love to do and uh, earn a living and compete and, and contribute to society and, and, and just kind of get things rolling, you know, what an opportunity and uh, super thankful to be here. There's a lot of debate online about the decision. Um, when, when it went and you started to hear it was a split, like, were you confident that you had won that fight? Oh, I thought it could have gone either way. Um, you know, he had a bunch of submission attempts, it was close. I had to pay, like, play a real patient game, um, you know, come forward, but not too much. Obviously, he was shooting under my, my punch attempts and uh, he's so dangerous everywhere. His transitions are so good that even if you scramble out of wrestling positions, like you're in danger, he's gonna take your neck. He almost had my arm from the back, like a lot of different spots. So even when he took me down, I couldn't just scramble right away. I, could, I knew I couldn't like play that game to just out hustle him and, and just use wrestling. Like it was gonna have to be my jujitsu along with the wrestling and full grappling game and play patient and try to hurt him. You know, I hit him with a couple good punches and some good elbows and stuff. So I knew I was hurting him in there. Um, not real close to finishing him, but he wasn't close to finishing me either. So, I mean, it could have gone either way. You know what I mean? <laughs> I expect to debate on that, you know? Yeah. And he was the number three ranked guy in Bellator in the division. I mean, yeah. where do you think the win puts you in, in the rankings? Uh, well, you know, usually these kind of things, um, I would think that a couple of the guys that are ranked right below him would move up. I don't think it puts me at three probably. Um, so I, I, if I had to guess, I'd probably be in there six, seven, eight, right in there. There's a couple of guys that are at the bottom of the top 10 that don't have a ton of fights. Um, so I think with my resume and guys I fought, you know, I fought a lot of tough guys even before the UFC in the UFC and now here in Bellator fighting the top guy, one of the top guys. I'd probably be six or seven, eight right in there. So, and uh, you know what, I'll, I'll get back in there as soon as I can earn that spot. If they don't think I deserve it, we can fight about it, you know? All right, we'll take a couple more here, Keith. Hey Dan, it's Keith Schilling for sure. Congratulations on the win today. Uh, you talked about he had a lot of close submissions. Were you ever thinking about tapping? Like how close were they? No, no, never thinking about tapping. I just knew that with his transition game and how tight he is, and the way he can move from one to the next, that there was trouble there. Um, he was on my back a couple times. And obviously, the guy's got rear naked chokes over a lot of guys. So I knew I had to be real patient there. And then uh, in the first round, he's on my back and had the Kimura attempt. And if I would have defended that fully and like stuck to it, then I would have went down and he would have transitioned my neck. And if I would have just tried to shake him off, then he would have ended up on the arm bar or the Kimura from the top. So there was things that were tight and close, but never thought of tapping. You know what I mean? You're going to, I've never submitted, you know what I mean? Thing. Knock on wood in a fight, like you're gonna have to break my arm or, or put me to sleep, you know what I mean? I'll go to sleep in there. I got no problem with that. And they were tight, but I was never tapping with never consideration, no. I understood. You just beat the number three ranked guy, as has already been mentioned. What kind of statement do you think that made to the rest of the division to, to not look past you? Well, I think they know that um, that I'm for real and uh, that I'm, I'm a hungry guy at my age and at where I'm at in the career. I think a lot of people would look at a guy who's an ex-UFC guy or that is close to my age or past it and think like, oh, I'm getting a, uh, a washed up guy or something that's not in as much as, uh, as he once was. But I, I got to the top level and, and honestly, I took it for granted. I didn't fight the way I should have and what, what I could have done when I was in the UFC. And uh, hats off to the guys that beat me there, but those were winnable fights for me. You know, Those guys are tough guys, but I could beat those guys. And uh, you know, I, I wasn't doing what got me there to get to the top level. When I got there, I got a little comfortable, you know what I mean? I've been doing this for over 10 years, so it's 13 really. And uh, I had to be honest with myself and say that you didn't do what, what got you there. You weren't true to yourself and it cost you. And I had to make a decision that at my age, I was willing to put in the time and the effort to get back to a big stage. Um, I thought it was gonna take me four fights, really. When I was out of the UFC, I was like, I'm gonna have to win four hard fights. And I fought a UFC veteran overseas in Abu Dhabi, got a knockout win there and uh, Obviously with the pandemic and the situation, um, it, it took me out for a while, but I knew that if I stayed true to my new myself, my, my, uh, my rebirth in the thing and, and my rededication to, to being a, a fighter and a professional martial artist and living that lifestyle, that the opportunity would come. And I stayed ready and I stayed prepared. Every week I was watching the top cards at Bellator UFC, 
looking at all the fights that were at 170, all the fights are at 155. Will they put me in against these guys and be ready and be in shape to go? Because when you get an opportunity, you got to be ready. You know, you never know what can happen. And, and this happened. This came to me in 10 days to fight the top three guy in the division. I came ready to fight. I was there for 15 minutes, and I pulled it off. So, uh, you know, it's, I think it says a lot about where I'm at and what I'm about. Like, I'm here, to, I'm here to stay, I'm here to win, and I'm here to fight. That wasn't the greatest performance I could have had, but listen, no one's going to come in here and smoke number three. He's fought 15 minutes with the toughest guys in the world, and I'll fight anybody that thinks they can beat me. Ben, go ahead. Ben? Hey, Ben. Congratulations on the big win tonight against a very tough opponent. Um, so you said you think that you'd be about sixth or seventh in the division. Is there anybody specifically that you want to fight next? Any names that you have in mind? Man, th this division is stacked. There's a ton of good guys. Um, yeah, I don't know. And, and there's guys I know, you know what I mean? Guys I've been training partners with, guys I've looked up to. I mean, Benson Henderson, Miles Drew. Like, I know those guys personally, man. Benson's like a, a brother to me. Like, I've had 50 rounds in the cage with that guy. Training, I love that dude. You know, what an honor that'd be to fight him. What an honor. Like, how do you, you know, to get to fight a guy that's a legend like that. Miles Drew brought me in to be a training partner for his. And, like, 2013, I stayed at the guy's house. What an awesome fight that would be. Uh, Sidney Ella, that's a great fight. I mean, all the guys that are right in the top 10. Keone Diggs, I know personally, he's my friend. Like, there's a lot of interesting matchups. All the young guys, I mean, either one of the pit bulls. Like, this is a great division, man. I'm excited to fight anybody and everybody, whether I know them personally and, and have a great story with them and their friends, or whether, uh, you know, they want to talk trash or and get whooped. I'll fight any of them. So I'm here to fight. All right, one or two more. Donna? Hey, Dan, congratulations on a great victory. Look, you're being very modest. You're saying you're, you don't think you're number three just because you beat the number three guy. Uh, I'm looking at the rankings here. Patricky Pitbull is above you. It, assuming you, you slot right in where uh, Goichi was, he's fighting Peter Queeley. That fight fell out the last time it happened, and, and Peter's had some injuries. I know Patricky pulled out of his last fight as well. Would you be willing to maybe step in if something happened with that fight in a couple of weeks? I'll fight next week. Yeah. <laughs> I'll fight either one, you know. Uh, I, I don't, like I said, I, I don't have time to sit around and wait. I'm not trying to pick opponents, you know what I mean? Like, I'll fight, I'll fight for the title next week, you know what I mean? I know he's, got, he's in the other tournament, so the division's <laughs> kind of caught up, but I'll fight anybody here. So if that fight falls through, I'm ready to go. I'm here to be a Bellator guy. I'm here to fight, and, like, I'll take every opportunity that comes. I took this one. I'll take the next one. Let's do it. If Bellator handed you the book and said, give yourself as many fights as you like in 2021, ideally, would you like, what, four? Maybe for the rest of the year, or three, three upcoming, four for the whole year. Yeah, you know what I mean. If you, if they go like this and I'm not hurt and I'm I'm not injured, like, you know, I'm trying to fight every month. Like, I'm here to fight. I'm here to work. You know, I had to take a, over a year off, like I said. You know, and that's a, with a lot of people. They've had to sit out and not get to work and not get to do stuff. And you know, you don't get forever in this game. I'm 34 years old. Thankfully, I haven't had a lot of injuries or took a lot of damage, so the miles aren't huge. But you know, I don't got forever in this. You know, if you're a heavyweight, you may be fighting in your 40s, but otherwise, you don't get all that long. So I'm not trying to waste any time. I'll fight every month if it works out. Ronald? Dan, this is Ronald E. Smith. I just want to just talk in the, in, right here in the moment. Right now, like you said, last one you had was back in 2019, and it, during, for you and everyone else during the pandemic. And now the ro long road it took you to get to Bellator to get that win over a high opponent. Just talking about right now, how does it feel for you to know that the road that you took was worth it to get to that, this moment? You know, uh, it was worth it to me no matter what, no matter what would have happened, whether I won this fight or lost this fight, whether I even got this fight. Um, you know, it's, it's really not about what, what comes of it. It's about what you ma it makes of you to do it and to travel the road, really. I don't do this to, to win the fights and to, to make a name for myself or doing like that. I do this because of the man that will make me to do it, you know, like – Martial arts has taught me everything. It's, it's changed my life, and it's made me into the person that I am, you know? Not that I was a bad person or would have been without it, but it's taught me so much about myself and about life, and that's the reason I do this, you know, is to, to learn and to try to grow, and it's, it's changed everything I've done. So, um, you know, the, the road to get here was long as hard. It's not, it's, not, it's not easy, but it's worth it, you know what I mean? Whether you get big fights and you, you get these wins and you get to be on TV or whatever else comes with it, like, to, to live this lifestyle and to do it the right way and to truly like take it all in and, and to try to better yourself from it is, is an amazing thing. So, uh, you know, 
there's no other road I'd rather be on. You know what I mean? I could have done something else with my life and made a lot more money and then, you know, had a family and all the other stuff that I, I don't have and that, that this is, uh, I've had to sacrifice to get here, but I don't think I would be the person that I am without it. So, you know, I'm super thankful to be on this road and to be on it with the people that I'm on it with. You know, I, I have a really, uh, an important crew around me, a tight group of people, my family, my friends, and in my inner circle, my tribe. We've, uh, we've had a huge couple of months, not just the team at Fight Ready MMA in Scottsdale, but particularly my close group of guys, Bryce Logan, that's with me here, fights next month, Henry Corrales, who fights next month, uh, my roommate, Luis Sadala, who uh, he makes his UFC debut tomorrow night, um, and a couple other guys, you know, that they're not just fighters, but our close friends, we, we've really gone through a lot, and it's uh, been a big transformation for me, and, and, and part of that growth has, has been huge, and then it's, it's led to this moment, you know, you don't just get things like this without working for it and earning it, and, um, you know, I, I'm thankful to be here and to, to do it with those kind of people, so it means a lot to me. All right, thanks, Dan. Thank you so much, guys.